Hello everyone, and welcome to my first Mod Showcase episode in Kerbal Space Program 0.24.2. And as will probably be a tradition for my Mod Showcase episodes, when a new version of Kerbal Space Program comes out, I will probably start with the Realism Overhaul mods. And I'll show how those have been updated, and uh, also whether they work or not. And in this case they do, barely. Uh, though we are working in 64-bit, uh, so it's actually uh, pretty impressive. And uh, so let me just go through the, the required mods first. I've got a lot of mods installed in this install. And so let me just mention the required ones first. And so we have Real, Real Solar System, Realism Overhaul itself, Real Shoots, Real Fuels, Tac Life Support, Fair Aerospace, Deadly Reentry, Engine Igniter, Advanced Jet Engines, and module RCS FX, which actually just comes bundled with Realism Overhaul anyway. Okay, so as you can see, Realism Overhaul turns Kerbin into Earth. That's what it does. You have various launch locations now. Uh, I'm sure people can figure out some that they would want to add to this. Uh, personally, I would like Edwards Air Force Base for uh, space plane design. But uh, other than that, it's a pretty robust list. As you can see, I am going to be starting off at Cape Canaveral uh, for various reasons. But uh, you, can, you have wallops uh, up there. You've got all sorts of little places. So, yeah, lots of choices as far as what latitude you want to start out at. But, of course, the newest version of Real Solar System doesn't just fix up the Earth to look like this. And by the way, the clouds, I must mention, are from uh, environmental visual enhancements. So that, that's what the clouds are from. And this is the only one that I've put clouds on. I've deleted the clouds from all of the other planets and I'll explain why in a moment. But let's uh, zoom out and focus on the moon. And the moon, of course, in real solar system six already had its own texture. So this is a very moon texture, as you can see very distinctive. So we've got that going, but however new for Real Solar System 7 is the textures on all the other planets. So Mercury, even though it's called Moho, looks like Mercury. There it is. A very nice texture. Now you can get the textures in three different packages. You can get uh, uh, 2048 by 1024, uh, that's the lowest resolution. Then you've got uh, 4096 by 2048. That's the medium range re resolution, which I think is what I've got installed in this. And then you've got the high, uh, high powered one, which is uh, 8192 by 1096. I think I might have installed mostly the 1096 by uh, 2048. However, I probably installed the highest resolution, t resolution textures on Earth. So, that is what I'm going with. Uh, in terms of RAM, I am running at about uh, 5.5 gigabytes of RAM, and that's why we need the 64-bit stuff, but but um, I've got a lot more mods than I've mentioned so far. But let's uh, hold off on that. We'll talk about that once we get to the VAB. Here's Venus, and this is why I needed to delete all of the other clouds from environmental visual enhancements. I don't have the right color. And so, since we don't have the right color for clouds around Venus and some of the other planets, I didn't want this looking purple, right? Because the, the clouds would still look purple. So we need a config for real solar system that will fix that. So, yeah. Mars. Actually, we're focused on uh, Gilly, which is standing in for one of the moons of Mars. And in fact, those have their textures too. Look at that. Little potato. And the other one's also another little lump. Yep. The two potato moons of Mars. Mars itself, of course, very, very nice. Ballast Manaris somewhere around here. Probably Olympus Mons somewhere. Definitely identifiable. Now, in our real solar system, we have the asteroid belt. And guess what? If you leave this time warping for long enough, you will get one. In fact, uh, the, the asteroids are not just between Earth and Mars, or Kerbin and Duna. They are in their real locations. Now, 
That caused a little bit of problems because I time warped to year 27 and I had like 32,000 of the bloody things. So uh, I had to manually go into the persistent file and delete them in order to make sure it loaded up. Thankfully they uh, appear randomly. So just because I deleted the last 30 odd thousand of them uh, doesn't mean that I didn't have them placed in the right places. So we've got the asteroid belt asteroids, we've got the Trojan asteroids sharing the orbit of Jupiter, and we also have asteroids in the Kuiper belt. So you've got all of that to look forward to. I'm sure someone will be eager to try and get to one of the asteroids in the Kuiper belt. That seems like a very challenging mission. But for now, let's go to Jupiter. And uh, I focused on one of the moons again. Okay, well, let's go there. I do not know the order of the moons of Jupiter, so that's a little bit of a problem. Uh, I think the innermost one is Io, right? Uh, of the four Galilean moons, of course. This looks looks like Io, and, and that definitely looks like Jupiter. So you get the picture. I'm not going to go through everything. Uh, Saturn doesn't have its rings. Uh, that's one little thing we can't quite do. Dres is in for Saturn. Uh, sorry for the sound of my scroll wheel, by the way. I'm sure you can hear that. But uh, yeah, but Saturn otherwise looks just fine. And I think I'll leave it there. We've got Uranus, but not Neptune. And I think that's because Neptune's orbit uh, crosses Pluto's, and that might be a thing that Kerbal Space Program, does, uh, program doesn't like. I don't know for sure. I don't know why we don't have Neptune. But we do have Pluto. Pluto's out there uh, with uh, Val, it looks like, standing in for it. So yeah, real solar system, much more complicated than it has ever been before. And uh, yeah, all thanks to the 64-bit thing, I'm sure, with the new textures. So with that said, let's go to the VAB. Now, the more perceptive of you have already figured out what I'm going to be planning to do in this episode, based on how much I time warped. But uh, for the rest of you, let me begin by talking about the part mods that I've also got added in. I do think that if you're going to use Realism Overhaul, you need AIES Aerospace, KW Rocketry, and Nova Punch and, uh, for the parts, as well as procedural parts. Mainly you need the engines from the first three, and procedural parts can handle all the rest. And uh, if you do not have those, you are going to be short some very important assets, especially the engines, right? Because you need proper engines, and with uh, Realism Overhaul, you have real engines bundled up with it. And so Real Engines modifies the c configs for all of these engines so that they match real actual engines. And so you've got that going for you. Other mods that I've got installed here, of course, environmental visual enhancements for the clouds. I deleted the city lights, though, for now, because it just wasn't working right. Um, BT's Merlin engines, Chatterer, Crew Manifest, FASA launch clamps, Hakari's F1 and Space Shuttle SRB, Hull Camera VDS, Raster Prop Monitor, Kerbal Joint Reinforcement, Curb Quake, Keythane with a patch, there's an important patch for it, uh, Inferno Robotics, MechJeb, Moonseeker's Greenhouse, Procedural Dynamics, Procedural Fairings, RNS Capsule Dyne, ScanSat, Sumdum Heavy Industries Capsule, uh, Telemachus, uh, Tweak Scale and Universal Storage. And that is a run through of all the mods that I have installed in here. And it is stable, ladies and gentlemen. So you don't have to worry. One mod that is traditionally uh, included with Realism Overhaul that I don't have installed is Remote Tech 2, and I have no idea whether that works or not. I already used a very similar install for my um, EDB Aerospace series, also in uh, 24.2, 64 bit, except I, in that one I have B9 Aerospace, uh, what's the other aircraft one? Uh, Space Plane Plus, I think, and uh, Fire Spitter, right? Uh, so, and that's working out just fine, as you've seen from those videos. Though a uh, little bit of landscape scape glitch, but you're gonna get that. Now, talking about what I'm gonna do, you can see Voyager Titan 3E. Yes, I am going to try and uh, and launch Voyager, and that's why I time warped 27 years to get the planets in the correct alignment. Hopefully, hopefully, real solar system has the data correct so that the alignment is 
exactly as it should be. This is actually time for Voyager 2 because it launched first. Voyager 1 actually launched after Voyager 2, but then passed it. Okay, and um, if you're going to be using Realism Overhaul, I'm sure you can figure out how it managed to do that. Uh, but otherwise, we have all the correct engines, LR87s at the bottom here. The saw rocket boosters have been tuned for both thrust and burn time, though the thrust is a little bit weaker than I think the SRBs are supposed to be, but the burn time is correct. Uh, I've tuned all the stages to burn time, so I don't know, the masses are actually a little bit heavier than they should be, rather than lighter. And as a result, I think we're going to have to burn, I don't know if they actually burn the centaur stage in order to get to orbit, but we're going to need to do that. Uh, I didn't get uh, see any documentation about whether the center stage was burned for orbit. But here's the center stage. And one of the neat things about uh, procedural parts is that you get all sorts of neat little shapes. And I've picked fillet cylinder for this, even though the center stage didn't, ha didn't look like that at all. Um, you can uh, do other shapes, but I don't want to mess with it too much. But you could, for instance, change the diameter of the fillet to the point where you can get a sphere. So you can do that. So you can uh, use the fillet cylinder to get yourself a spherical tank if you want that. Uh, make sure that if your engines are, are uh, burning certain types of fuel, for instance, I think we've got one here. Uh, this is Aerozine N204. I don't know if it needs to be pressurized, but just in case I'm going to do it. So I'm going to go Aerozine N204 pressurized in order to make sure that feeds properly. Definitely the the tanks for the RCS fuel need to be service module tanks. So you can see whenever you have MMH N204 definitely you want a service module tank otherwise it won't feed to the thrusters. Also with a real, so, a real realism overhaul you need to make sure that your little RCS units are properly configured to the right fuel that you're using, in this case uh, monomethyl hydrazine and nitrogen tetroxide. This is just an empty thing. I tried to copy the look of Voyager as much as possible from pictures and that's what I've got, though of course I don't have exactly the right parts, but I think I've got it uh, pretty close. It's actually a little bit small in diameter, so that's a little bit of a downer. But other than that, it's pretty close. The dish should actually be bigger than this. Okay, so we've got that. I've got all sorts of action groups. We've got the kind of delta V we need to reach Jupiter. And after that, we have to just uh, rely on slingshots. Oh. Hmm. I thought I had... Oh, no, it's not an action group like this. Sorry, Infernal Robotics. Hello, Infernal Robotics. I want to see you. Yes, and probably that as well. Life support aid is the one thing I don't need for this mission. Infernal Robotics. And so I've got some uh, hinges here. I've got uh, one for the instrumentation arm, which is this one. And so that's three and four. I've got, uh, I forget which one. Oh, uh, it, uh, five and six. Oh, uh, three and four is for both the instrument arm and, the, and this unit. Yeah. I think so. So the um, RTG unit also extends on that. That's probably a mistake on my part. But I guess we can fiddle with that some other time. Okay, and then these two operate the camera on the arm. So we've got the camera and we can turn it around and point it at things. And in this case, since we have great textures for the planets, we will want to point it at things. So centaur stage, everything is good. Let's bundle this up. So Titan 3E, I tried to get it as close as possible, but there's obviously gonna be discrepancies. I didn't realize that the Titan 3s had this much uh, thrust to weight, and that means this is gonna be a novel launch for me. It's gonna be a novel launch because I don't usually launch stuff with this much thrust. I actually keep it to around uh, 1.2 to 1.3 uh, thrust to weight ratio at sea level and this is 1.7 and uh, yeah that's that's a pretty pretty tough thing good good thing uh, no uh, people are gonna be riding on top of this 
in this case. So I'm gonna have to adjust my my trajectory quite a lot. My normal trajectory for for launches quite a lot because of that. Okay, but uh, enough talk. Um, I actually need to go to the tracking station to make sure we're in exactly the right day and time for this. So let me do that first. Huh. This is interesting. I just backed out of the VAB and it gave me this view. And when I say it gave me this view, I can't move the camera. Glitch! I found a glitch. <laughs> I found a glitch. Okay, I can't I can't I can't do anything. I want uh let's let's do some experimentation. I'm going to go to R&D. Oh, well, of course that's closed cuz I'm in uh astronaut complex. Okay, so we're here. Let's back out again. Nope, gives me this view. Okay, uh, let me back out from the save and then re-enter and see if it still gives me this view or if I can get to the tracking station. Oh, that was weird. Okay, so I decided to back out of the save. I went back, uh, you know, exit, and it gave me the VAB. Okay, so there are glitches after all. Okay, this time it gave me the outside, and I have to point out, the land looks really, really green. I mean, really, really green. I don't know if the swamp lands of uh, Cape Canaveral look this color, but I hope so. Anyway, uh, warning though, if you actually try and land on this terrain, you'll probably sink right through. Okay, tracking station. So what I need to do right now is actually time warp just about nine days. And that's because the launch of Voyager 2 was on August 20th, 1977. And if you just work out the number of days, then that's year 27, day 232, because Real Solar System starts out on January 1st, 1951. Now... I don't know how it handles leap years in real solar system, so I'm not going to bother trying to get it at the exact right time. I'm just going to satisfy myself with getting the right day. Okay, so that is uh, 2.32. That's the right day. We're early enough that we probably won't miss it. And if you take a look, Jupiter is at the right angle for a transfer. It so happens that uh, Jupiter's transfer uh, time to uh, from Earth is at the same phase angle as Kerbin and Joule in the regular game. So about 96 degrees and that is where it's at right now. And perhaps you can also see that if we do meet uh, Jupiter, given how slow these two actually move, uh, we'll be slingshotting like this to uh, Saturn and then a slingshot to Uranus there. These move so slowly that they'll probably maintain their relative positions pretty closely by the time we make the transfers. So you can see the particular sequence that NASA was hitting with uh, Voyager. The actual timing isn't too sensitive. After all, they sent Voyager 1 as well a month later. I think it was a month later. So, uh, so yeah, uh, th there is some fudge factor in terms of how we make our transfers. But we've got the timing right, so let's take the Voyager on the Titan 3E out to the launch pad. Okay, so what I'm doing here is I need to get the right timing, uh, the right inclination. So, rendezvous planner, you can see our relative inclination to the moon is 56 degrees, which is very far off. Uh, what we need is uh, basically a zero degree to the moon will probably be uh, good for a transfer to to Jupiter. Uh, it's the best thing we can do until you get some sort of satellite up that that is exactly in line with Jupiter and that's a tricky thing to do. So I've got a time warp here and uh, unfortunately I don't have my normal displays uh, configured so I have to settle for whatever MechJeb gives me here. Of course, getting the relative inclination to zero is one of the benefits of launching from uh, Cape Canaveral because it can get pretty close to that. Not exactly. It can't actually get exactly zero. A higher latitude location would be able to. 
I believe. Is it higher or lower? Maybe no. Maybe maybe it's a lower latitude location. Not totally awake yet, so forgive me. I'm also not guaranteeing success here, folks. Uh, let let me just state that right up front. This is a difficult thing to do, and will probably take multiple episodes. So yeah, but we've got the first part. Uh, first part dealt with. Where are we? Oh, okay. We're on the bright side. Good. That's a relief. I was worried that we'd be launching in the dark. That's not good. Okay, so uh, throttle is up. SAS is on. Might not be a good thing to have SAS on with all this thrust. Um, there is a gimbling problem uh, because I don't have uh, tweakable gimbal installed on this, which is something I usually use. Uh, gimbling, lim being able to limit gimbal is very critical when playing with realism overhaul because SAS does not like the really huge gimbal ranges of some of these engines. But uh, we'll see. I think this will work out. Uh, it shouldn't be too bad. I've played with these engines before. Uh, forgive me if it doesn't look exactly like the Voyager on the Titan 3E, but uh, this is as close as I could get. I, I tried to size the tanks uh, in length appropriately uh, and adjusting capacity utilization as necessary to get that right, so it should be the right height. Uh, the payload fairing though might not be the right height, it might be a little bit too tall. Okay, so uh, other than that, I think we're ready to go. I'm only planning to get into orbit in this episode and we will do all the transfers in a following episode because I simply don't have enough time otherwise. So, uh, and this was sort of an intro to the new versions of real realism overhaul anyway. This is mod showcase after all, even though it's sort of a Voyager special. Okay. So uh, with all that said, we're ready to go. Let's light this thing. Needs a delay between the first lighting and the SRB's lighting for some reason. Okay, we're good to go. And the higher thrust means that you have to plan your... How do I put this? Uh, you have to start your gravity turn quicker. I think that's a fair way of putting it. And in fact, that's happening right away. Okay, so far so good, but we aren't in the dodgy part yet. The trickiest part of this is right around where we hit Mach 1. Let's bring Fair Mirror Space up. So this is Fair, fair Mirror Space. Uh, I don't want to go to 80 yet. Go to 82 first. I'm already too slow, darn it. Go to 80. I'm definitely not going to try and do this by hand, by the way. This is... Okay, 78 is probably where I need to be right now. High dynamic pressure, yeah, I know. Let's hold this until we get past, uh, well, looks like we'll have to get to 75 right now. Uh, okay. Still looking okay. Yeah, I should say between the speed of sound and max Q is where the toughest part of this is. Okay, we've hit max Q. Okay, I'm, I need to be a little bit more moderate about this. The thrust on this will make it flip out if you're not very careful. Okay, nominal. We've got the RTGs on the Voyager probe, so electric charges should not be a problem. I hope the RTGs are sufficient. I put three, The obviously Voyager had three and so I put three. I did try to check the electric charge, but there are no guarantees about that because we're going all, you know, going all over the place and it's going to be a long trip. I need to be at 60 by now. Uh, I'm 
If you want to know how I know that, it's it's basically experience. Uh, this isn't a very good view. Let's uh, get a view of the landscape as we recede from from Florida. I mean, yes, I haven't uh, flown a rocket with this much thrust-to-weight ratio, but I know what that means, what it means to fly a rocket like this. I'm about five degrees behind where I want to be. Uh, not too much lag. Right now the air pressure is low enough that I could probably risk a quicker turn. Remember that remote tech is not installed. Okay, otherwise there would be other things that need to go on right about now. Okay, our sun rocket boosters are going to run out soon. Now some of the other SRBs are configured properly. This one does not seem to be. In other words, they're supposed to tail off in thrust as they burn. Uh, these procedural SRBs don't seem to be configured like that. Okay, SRB separation. SRBs are clear. Going to 30. Uh, okay, fairings I need in a separate stage here. And fairing separation. Uh, well, okay, let's hold off on that until this stage burns out. Okay, uh, well, let's do fairing separation. Uh oh, that's not good. Uh, well, uh oh, something went wrong. Hold on. Why didn't this stage light? Huh. Okay. Huh. I don't think this is gonna be able to get it to uh, Jupiter. So let's let's do something I rarely do. Let's let's revert to vehicle assembly to see what might have gone wrong here. I think I might not have saved the change to service module. Let me just press save now. Let me just see. Uh, Hang on. Well, it doesn't really say it needs a pressurized tank, though. Uh, if you, if any of the ones that actually do, will actually say it when you hover over the engine. And I'm sort of hovering over the engine underneath the fairing here. Uh, I think I've got the wrong mix of uh, Aerozine and N204. Actually, neither of these mixes seem to be the right one. Hold on. Let me get into this fairing. You're on this thing, right? Yeah? Hmm. Well, wait a minute. Uh, this stage is cryogenic and goes with Aerozine and 204, so this stage should be fine with cryogenic. Shouldn't be changing these things so often. Save that. I don't know. Okay, well, let me just fix the fairing staging. We'll do that later. Were there any other problems? I don't think so. We were fine up till second stage ignition. Uh, I could do with a uh, retro burn to pull this stack away.
Do we have a better retro burn device? I think KW Rocketry comes with one. Let me. Uh, no. Oh, well, that's really big. Yeah, just use the Separatrons. Uh, ugly, but efficient. Not sure why the decoupling force on these was so weak. What's up with that? Uh, just gonna up the ejection force on those. Okay, let's try this again. Up to launch pad. Actually, it occurs to me we're probably on the wrong day. Yeah. Oh, no, no, we're on the right day. Okay, good, good, good. Uh, all right, so how do I get rid of far in this view when the far icon doesn't show up? That's a bit of a problem. Right, so uh, again, time warping to relative inclination. Maybe this caused a problem somehow, I don't know. All right. Here we go again. Let's make sure everything is right and proper here. Uh, this tank has fuel. Good. Has fuel. And don't need that anymore. All topped up from everything there. Okay, well, let's try this again. Let's try a little bit of a better tra trajectory this time. All right. Really doesn't like me lighting those SRBs like within five seconds of the main engine. Not too sure why that is. Uh, Pre-execute its uh, just holding it up like this. There we go. Okay, all systems nominal. Looking good on the ascent so far, but again, not the tough part yet. Well, the surrounding area looks vaguely swampy from this view. Okay, it is a much better trajectory this time around. Still facing high dynamic pressure, but max Q we've passed. So... Okay, back to nominal. Sorry for the lack of commentary. I'm reading the numbers here, especially time to apoapsis, which is growing very quickly because we're still at a very high pitch. And that causes all sorts of complications. Let me get that fixed. You can see our apoapsis is getting a bit high. for this early phase in the in the launch. I better not try and move it anymore otherwise uh, we'll be still in motion as the solid boosters run out. Very high G's as you can see. Okay. SRB SEP is good. Still going a bit high here.
Okay. Set. And ignition. All right, good. We have ignition of the second stage and fairing separation now. Let's get this level. Still not very good on the fairing separation. I wonder why it doesn't eject properly. Okay, uh, we've got it. Looks good. Second stage of the Centaur 3. And then, uh, not the Centaur, Titan 3, and then this is the Centaur stage. Again, it should be sized pretty, pretty close to what it was. Except that the Voyager should actually be wider. It's not, uh, wasn't this narrow. I'm gonna give it a no. I don't need a, any pitch. This is fine. Hmm. Occurs to me I might have forgotten to. I probably should have put Ullage rockets of some kind on this. I don't know, I, I'll have to look up whether the Centaur has them or not. But uh, we do need to relight this. It's not just a single light. Again, engine ign ignition, don't forget that. Very important. This one has 10 relights altogether. Right now the fuel flow is very stable, but that can change. There's Florida, Cuba over there, the Bahamas. Haiti, Dominican Republic, Jamaica, Puerto Rico. And of course the entire eastern seaboard of the United States, that's uh, that's uh, Massachusetts poking out there, Cape Cod, Long Island, New Jersey, Delaware. Nice view. We're of course very high, so I usually don't go into such high orbits. And I don't know what the orbit, the parking orbit for Voyager was. So that's another problem. I, I know that for the Apollo missions, but don't have that data for Voyager. I'll have to look for that. Of course, going into a high orbit is uh, good for interplanetary transfers because of, uh, of the time it takes to do the burn. It's more accurate this way. But I don't know whether it's the way they did it. Okay, here we go. We're about to run out of this stage. Okay. I'm gonna throttle down. Separate. Woo! Those Separatrons really... They got some juice in them. Okay, but uh, ah, of course they've probably been beefed up by realism overhaul. Now. Now we've got some time to apoapsis, I believe. Four minutes. Uh, let me just quickly check whether we can do any sort of direct transfer so we don't have to relight. Nope. <laughs> no, no, no. We're not in the right place for that at all. Okay. Yeah, I forgot. Uh, I really didn't uh, take into consideration what kind of maneuvering thrusters there are on the Centaur stage. So, probably going to have to come back to... For, for Voyager 1, we will definitely have that fixed up. So that, remember, this is Voyager 2 being launched first, and so for Voyager 1, maybe I'll have that, that uh, all sorted out. 
But right now we're just coasting to Apoapsis and then we'll do the rest of the burn with this stage. Hopefully it'll remain stable up through then. We can activate the engine. Interesting sound for engine activation. I don't think that's what they wanted to have, but... Okay. I guess they didn't really take into account the fact that I would want to activate the engine without lighting it first. Go figure. Not much way to turn this. Uh, we do have RCS on the Voyager itself though, but that's about it. What kind of time do we have on this stage? Well, close to 8 minutes. That's correct by the way. 7 minutes 50 seconds is what my sources said was correct for the Centaur. And that's to get us all the way to Jupiter, so it's not just what we have here. Yeah, okay. That's close enough. Ooh, nice sound for this engine, though. There's no point in me slowly throttling up. It's just on or off. Now that we've got it on, I can get our heading right as well. Oh, and if you uh, do do this sort of burn right around Apoapsis, it's nice to have half the burn on one side of Apoapsis and the other half on the other. And uh, just like you would for a maneuver node. You'll see that in real rocket launches. You'll see that they're still burning as the altitude goes down a bit. That is uh, the same sort of phenomenon. Okay, I'm not going to circularize. I'm going to cut the engine off there. Ooh, we had some leftover effects there. And the reason I'm not is I want to keep my orbit a little bit low on this side because I expect that this side is the side I'm going to be burning out of. Yeah. So that'll help out. Ooh. You know what? If they didn't have to rush to Jupiter, they could have probably swung by Mars as well. This is the transfer time for Mars. Well, actually, Mars would be over here. So they would have to wait a little bit longer to transfer to Mars. I wonder if... Uh, the yeah, I mean, so maybe Voyager 1 could have done a swing by of Mars, but I don't know. That might have affected its uh, trajectory such that it wouldn't hit uh, Jupiter properly. Anyway, interesting to note. Assuming that the planets are correctly in aligned in the uh, real solar system and considering the way that the other planets are, uh, I think that's pretty correct. I mean, uh, considering we've got Jupiter in the right place for transfer and Saturn, Uranus like that. Yeah, looks good. So, we are in orbit. And that is what I plan to do for this episode. Uh, so tune in for the next Mod Showcase episode as we see the brilliance of realism overhaul at work and get the Voyager 2 towards Jupiter and perhaps beyond assuming that our transfers work out right again we we don't really burn much around Jupiter the Delta V on we've only got uh, RCS ports on here so it's not like we've got a ton of Delta V on the on the Voyager I've got uh, a little bit of uh, MMH N204 there but that's about it so yeah, yep, and of course there's also the question about whether we can relight this engine. So those are things we'll answer next time. If for some reason this fails, I will uh, try to launch Voyager 1. Okay, so um, after that there are other mods I want to look at. I do want to uh, try out the MKS, the Modular Colonization System. Uh, somebody asked me to do a uh, mod showcase on that and that's on my list. So look forward to that as well. Alright, so thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. 
and I'll see you next time.